When is the right time to raise the lights? One of our VIP members asked me this great question. So, in this video, we're going to get into it. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. We got our $2.99 membership, and we have a VIP if you need a little more one-on-one. -on -one. Link down in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So, obviously, there are manufacturer recommendations, right? They're going to have all these car readings and light gizmos and all that other, uh, like, light equipment and stuff that they recommend you to purchase. Me, personally, I don't like to go by any of that stuff at all. Just because there's so many things that changes how a plant's going to respond in the moment, okay? okay? And what do I mean by all that? Well... Let's say, let's say the leaves aren't uh, as thick as they normally are. And for whatever reason, maybe you're running CO2, maybe you're not running CO2, maybe your watering practices have been inconsistent this run, maybe you've had a, a bug problem, who knows what's going on. But let's say one grow, you have a great grow and you, your, your leaves are really thick while the other ones are thin, or let's say you have a mixed crop with different varieties and you have different, different things happening. Well, if you go by like a manufacturer's recommendation and you stick next to that and you stick to learning that's how you do use your equipment well you're never going to become in tune to the plant and in learning the language of the plant and how it talks to you and learning that yeah just learning the whole language and so the very most simplest one to just be aware of and look at is uh, they call it the tacoing right with the are the leaves pushing up you know upward and if that's the case what happens when for you when someone gets in your space what do, what do you want to do or where the environment's too much what do, what do you do i mean yeah you want to try and stretch out so you know you don't want i mean somebody's in your space of course you're going to feel cramped up so you're going to feel a little bit confined but you're going to want to try to you know make some make some room for yourself you hit it on the dot and what would you do to make room for yourself Okay, you probably stoked me here. I would definitely try to, you know, stretch my arms out. I would, you know. You, you would stretch your arms out. That was exactly thing that I was looking for. <laughs> exactly. You would stretch your arms out. The arms for the plant are the outside edges of those leaves. Gotcha. Okay. And what is it doing? It's pushing away the energy, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, pl the plant can't control the light, but it's talking to you and saying, hey, you know, this is what's going on. If you learn to just be very in tune to that, as the plant's growing, you'll know when to raise uh, raise the light because you have a couple things you could do with the light. If especially if you have the LED or HID, you can dim down the light, you can raise the light, and each thing is going to do something different for you, right? So if you raise the light, what's going to happen to the light? It's going to get brighter. Well, if, I mean, if you raise it vertically, like uh, from distance from the canopy of the light or dis distance from the canopy, what, what will happen to that light? The light's going to spread, right? It's going to shred, exactly. Okay, so if you keep it right over the plant and just dim down the light, what's going to happen? Well, I mean, less light exposure to the branches, I would imagine. Exactly. Like, so if you raise the light and keep the intensity of light going, you're going to spread that light out. If you have a large canopy room, that might be worth it, right? Because you're spreading the light out, the light's going to spread. It's still going to hit the hit the flowers. It's going to be collected through photosynthesis. That's a good way to solve it. But if you have a smaller room and you just drop the light or just don't raise it, but you reduce the intensity of it, you're going to be more efficient in your, in your return on investment. Gotcha. You get what I mean? Yeah, I do. It makes perfect sense, actually. And that's how I try to approach the rooms. If I remember, sir, when we first got together, we, we started with hydroponics, right? No, I wasn't in the hydroponics. I, I remember you were asking me that oh, in one of our messages. The rye never? Never started with rock? Okay. Never started with rock wool. I um, okay. When I started with you, I was just, I was already in the mix, but I had just ran into a bunch of problems. Like my leaves were turning all types of yellow. I think I even, oh, I think I overwatered with my first bro and just like drowned out the root system, which was a, a total bummer, but it was definitely something I maybe want to get back up on, you know, and try again. So. Okay. All right. So no big deal. Okay. I scrolled all the way up and I was like, I didn't see any hydroponics. So I was like, yeah, anyways, um, it was just problem after problem after problem with my first grow. I mean, this grow has been running so smooth. I haven't had any type of pole or mold or pest issues. It's just, it's been beautiful. And I think you had me switch over to dry amendments opposed to the Fox Farms line that I started using originally. And things have just been so much easier. You know, it's like you sit back, you you mix your soil and it's just like you're just watering in and you're, you're mixing your EM1 and everything kind of just 
it works for itself. If that makes any sense. Absolutely. That's the way it's supposed to do it. You, what happens is when you use fertilizer bottles, you end up firing all your chemists and your biologists, and you are the sole chemist and biologist. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you a chemist? A PhD, not chemist, a a PhD nope. biologist? I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't want that type of, I don't want that job. You know, so it's like, it, why are you firing them then, right? It, it, like, if you don't want to do the work, so that's why we put the bacteria back in, the proper bacteria, the godfather and the godmother bacteria is back in and let them go and hire and fire people for you. Right. Um, we were talking about also about the light. So we're talking about the, so you understood that part, right? Yes. Okay. Is it normal that if you took a clone and put it side by side with a plant that was from seed, I think from seed you're going to get a lot more production out of the out of it than you would the clone. And is is that a thing? 